Rugby Championship, round number two. At last, we get the game between the All Blacks and the Wallabies. It's on this Sunday. It's in Perth. 2 p.m. local kickoff. So it's afternoon international rugby, which is something which is always a bit of a treat. We don't get that all that often. Uh, 6 p.m. New Zealand time. I think it's 4 p.m. Eastern time in Australia. So, yes, we'll go over the teams. The lineups are out. I'll put those in the description. Some of the predictions, some of the stats. And, um, yeah, you guys can let us know how you think. This one is going to play out. There's certainly been a lot of build-up to this one. With the delay in the game being played, you know, New Zealand going into lockdown, the All Blacks not flying out immediately, and then the hoo-ha between Rugby Australia, the he, she, he said, she said stuff, which was uh, pretty unfortunate, but they finally got things across the line. The All Blacks have gone through a kind of soft quarantine process in Western Australia. How much that quarantine process... Uh, affects their build-up and likewise the Argentinians and the Springboks in a week's time uh, will be an interesting one to watch but yeah the Wallabies have been waiting for a while so they'll be keen to get cracking in uh, on the All Blacks they are um, they are probably frustrated I guess with uh, with the waiting but it'll give them certainly a lot of prep time and they'll also be frustrated with last week not last week last game's uh, performance which was 57-22 to the All Blacks so I know the Wallabies guys uh, like they did press conferences like Tate McDermott who was particularly frustrated and embarrassed uh, with some of their performances although you know it's just there's certainly bright spots it's just not the 80, 80 minutes thing and the All Blacks um, we'll go through the lineup in a minute but they've picked it relatively stable uh, Fozzie kind of emphasizing keeping the battle hardened guys after you know having to go through quarantine he wants to pick the guys who are the most likely to kind of be uh, to be sharp for the Wallabies, though, it's Slipper, Fainga, and Ala Alato in the front row. So, uh, Brendan Fainga Mosa is injured. He is unavailable for this one, although apparently Dave Rennie said uh, he was going to pick Fainga either way because he was um, he was training really well. And interestingly, it's it's two new hookers because Lockie Lonergan comes in on the bench. Uwelese uh, is out of the 23. I haven't read anything about him being injured, but the guy's got a pretty notorious uh, injury history. So, either way, you got two new hookers for... Uh, the Wallabies, Slipper, and Ala Alatoa are the props who started in the last game as well. Uh, Swain and Phillip continue on as the locks. Swinton, Hooper, and Valtini continue on in the back row. So for the Ford pack, it's pretty similar to the side that lined up at Eden Park in the starting 15. McDermott and Lolisio continue on at 9-10. That, that young halves combo, they've been certainly getting a lot of minutes together in recent times. So if you're a Wallabies fan, obviously you want these guys to be forming, performing this week, but... These guys getting game time together is uh, their minutes in the bank going forward into a World Cup in a couple of years' time, right? Uh, interestingly, the massive news is that Karevi, speaking of massive, like literally a massive dude, a massive hitter, uh, is in there at 12. So it's a it's a huge sea change from from going from Matt Tamua, who's kind of a, a more slender, he's like a 10 playing 12, right? He's not a big dude, he's not a big tackle breaker, but he's a, a distributor, a playmaker, to Samu Karevi, who's an absolute blockbusting runner. So it's a big shift. Uh, and then Ikitao is in for Paisami uh, at 13. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting shift, man. I mean, everyone's happy to see Samu Karevi back. You may have seen him a little bit at the Olympics. I saw a game or two of his, and he still seems to be that kind of big ball carrier. So expect to see a lot of that from him. I haven't seen him play 15s in, in ages since he left Aussie Rugby. So, um, yeah, good to see him back. Corey Beth is in the left wing. Callaway's in the right wing. And Banks is at 15, so it's the same uh, three outside backs for the Wallabies. So it's, it's an interesting one. Like, it's it's largely stable, uh, but there are certainly some changes, especially when you look at the bench. Like I mentioned, Lonergan, but you've also got Bell in for CO, Tupo still there. Uh, Rodders in for Salakai Oloto. Remember, Salakai Oloto and uh, Paisami are both away from the squad because they're um, you know, expecting children like three of the all blacks guys so five of these guys are expecting children this month so that's crazy uh samu's in for wilson which is an interesting call because i don't think wilson did a lot wrong but um uh there's white hodge and pataya comes in on the bench as well so i guess hodge is kind of covering uh 10 12 maybe 12 i don't know pataya maybe covering 13 in the outside backs we'll have to kind of wait and see uh how the replacements are used and whether dave has to bring anyone on for injuries or if he's going to make something tactical but either way, um, so yeah, the starting lineup is pretty stable. Like Ikitao coming up from the bench, Karevi, so it's a new midfield and a new hooker 
but otherwise it's pretty much the same team with a much changed bench. Now, for the All Blacks, as I mentioned, with the lockdown, Fozzie has decided to pick largely guys who played in that last game, so it's the same front row, Bauer, Taylor, and Laulala. Uh, Ritalik is there as well, but um, Scott Barrett jumps up from the bench to play alongside him ahead of Sam Whitelock. He's one of the three All Blacks guys out um, with the childbirth thing. Uh, Iwane Papali'i and Savi is the same back row, and they've been... I'll get to their stats in a minute, but they've been uh, they've been pretty phenomenal. Uh, Weber comes in for Aaron Smith, who's another one of the guys out with childbirth. Uh, Barrett is in for Moonga, who's the third of the three guys who's out with his missus uh, as she's expecting a child. Um, so yeah, it's an all new nineteen combo for the All Blacks. That could be. I don't know, man. Like the the Wallabies were asked about it. Is this a point of weakness for the All Blacks? And they kind of like laughed it off. Like yeah, sure enough, bringing in Bowden Barrett, two time World Player of the Year, is, is not exactly a weakness, right? But it is a new combination. I don't know how many tests Weber and Barrett have played together, but I wouldn't imagine it's a huge amount. So it may take them a little bit of time to get cracking, but uh, we'll see how they go. Havili and ALB uh, is the midfield. So ALB is back. Good to see him back at 13. We've looked a little bit uh, shallow on uh, on players in the midfield in recent times. So Rico Iwane shifts to the left wing ahead of Severis, uh, who drops out of the 23 and um, Will Jordan and Jordy Barrett are the other guys. So Jordan comes in for DMAC, who drops to the bench to kind of cover 10. So yeah, it's all a rich tapestry, this one, isn't it? Uh, the bench, Tokiaho, Tui Nukuafe, and Ta'ava are the three Ts uh, covering the front row. Va'i uh, is in for Patrick Tuipulotu, who's got a niggling injury. Uh, it's his first game of the series, man. He hasn't played, like we've played Tonga, Fiji twice, and now Australia twice. Va'i hasn't got a minute yet, but he's finally in the 23. Uh, Blackadder also comes in, Pedernada, uh retains that kind of bench role, you thought maybe he was going to step up with Weber going to the bench, but it's it's straight to the um, the starting role for Weber, and uh, D-Mac and George Bridge, uh, the guys covering, uh, you know, kind of 10, 15, 14, uh, 11 and whatnot, so um, yeah, there's enough changes to keep things interesting, but I mean, largely the squad's are pretty similar ones to, to the ones we saw play a few weeks ago. Um, Akira Iwane, I wanted to mention these guys for the All Blacks especially. He's been doing a heck of a lot of the carrying. And Dalton Papo, he's been doing a heck of a lot of the tackling. Uh, those guys seem to make a pretty dynamic combo. As an All Blacks fan, I'm actually pretty happy with how these guys are going. Obviously, they know each other pretty well from the Blues, so they should be able to play uh, together pretty well. And remember, they got Savia with them, who's captain this week, so... Uh, it's kind of good that he doesn't have to worry too much about them because, you know, they've been playing together for an age. So, uh, Savia can kind of focus on the team uh, as a whole. Uh, for the Wallabies, they've certainly been using those um, those outside backs a lot. They've been caught a few times, uh, you know, with those wide intercept balls. But if you look at the try scorers uh, for the Wallabies, I think... Um, you know, Callaway's got a couple, Banks got one. They've been trying to get their um, their outside backs involved as much as possible. So um, as long as they can do it without surrendering intercepts, uh, they could get some pay. But yeah, they, they, they really do need to be uh, very careful because yeah, the, the tackling numbers for the uh, tackling numbers, the meter numbers for the, the Aussie wingers and, and fullback have been um, have been pretty huge. I would say for a work on the Aussie line out needs to be a better. It's been operating at like 80 80 percent but key moments the wallabies line out has been letting them down and then surrendering like key opportunities to easy exits for the all blacks that's one thing they can't be doing uh the all blacks in that first game remember they had 18 penalties conceded they did drop that to nine in the second test so uh the all blacks kind of were able to correct one of their weaknesses uh from week one into week two and for the wallabies in terms of correcting weaknesses man like the Wallabies have averaged 386 run meters a game, which is not bad against the All Blacks, but they're still not at um, not at the All Blacks numbers. The All Blacks are really tearing it up, 550 average meters a game. Uh, game one, the All Blacks averaged 5.4 meters a carry, which is pretty good, man. Like the magic number is four or above. Uh, so 5.4 the All Blacks in game one. Eight meters per carry, game two. Now, obviously those numbers are skewed a little bit when you get an intercept, you get a bunch of free meters but eight meters of carry is pretty horrendous stuff. The Wallabies were at uh, 3.2 meters per carry in the first game, 4.3 in the second. So there were bright spots for the Wallabies in that second game, but man, you can't be giving up eight meters of carry. 
horrendous stuff. Um, last five results, it's four to one in favor of the All Blacks. They did lose uh, over in Australia the 24-22 game uh, last year, which was kind of the equivalent fixture to this one. So there has been uh, a record of the Wallabies kind of winning this kind of fixture. So they may go into that one with a little bit of confidence. The last time they were at Perth, it was 47-26 to the Wallabies. Big, big result. Red card for the All Blacks in that one. So maybe that gives the Wallabies a little bit of confidence. And over the last five in Australia, it's 3-2 to two to the Wallabies. So maybe that gives them a bit of confidence. But it's it's been mostly the All Blacks. Over the last five, the average score has been 36-17 to the All Blacks. So the All Blacks should go into this one. Uh, looking to get that kind of clean sweep. And Bowden Barrett mentioned in the press conference as well, that's an area they've been kind of a little bit lacking and the coaches want them to correct it. No Quade Cooper's a pity. That would have been fascinating to see him get a crack, but uh, not to be, unfortunately. Uh, Damon Murphy is the ref for this one, so it's an Aussie ref. Hopefully he has a good game. Uh, the bookies have got the All Blacks by 16 points for this one. Uh, the rugby forecast algorithm is going a little bit more conservative, saying All Blacks by 7. So... Yeah, should be a pretty good game, guys. Let me know what you reckon. How do you think this one's going to go? Do you think the Wallabies over in Australia can kind of pick things up? They'll stop surrendering soft tries with uh, with intercepts, or do you think the All Blacks have got the Aussies' number and will kind of make it three on the bounce? But anyway, uh, you guys let me know your thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you soon. See you later.